Uh, okay, we're gonna get started with the next talk. Um, so we're gonna hear about CoreOS and Claire. Yep. Um, all right. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for being uh, in that session. Uh, I'm Julian from uh, Belgium. I work in Humanity Consultancy Company, and I'm. I tell myself as I'm a DevOps facilitator in big uh, company uh, like bank or energy. So it's quite sensitive environment. So we had a lot of discussion about security and especially with containers. So it's why I would like to speak about Claire, the CoreOS project, and a small tool that I developed for that that's called HyperClaire. Uh, so let's start for, uh, with the questions. So for you, what's the main concern using container in production sensitive uh, environments? I just give a tip. <laughs> yeah, for sure it's security. With every people in the bank I speak about, uh, containers, the main concern was security. They don't want to use it because it's really a nightmare to use and to secure a container. There is many reasons for that, that's okay, but let's give a little context about that. So now we have containers, a lot of containers. It's easy to deploy, it's easy to push it everywhere, and easy to put, to put a, a lot of things inside it. So the main idea was with the container, it's the single process. So you have a container with only, uh, only one thing inside. So yeah, it's easy, and you can see like that on a, um, a lot of picture. But when you go in company, Briefly, you will go inside some containers like that. So with, with containers with a lot of things already installed in, the, in it, and at a time, you will totally forget what are inside your container, and especially where it's deployed, which layer have which uh, application installed in it, and things like that. So it's quite a nightmare at that time to know which, uh, what are in the container and uh, uh, yeah, and where um, are that, that containers? So there is a, a, a matrix. I don't know if you can read the first uh, la um, line. It's the, the most important one. It's some security threat that uh, can be encountered with the, uh, the containers. So there is uh, many of that. Can I exploit the DDoS attacks, containers breakout, compromise secrets, and also poison image. The interesting things with that matrix is that, okay, the, we can do a lot of things with all the security threat, but the poison image with vulnerabilities, there is only one thing that we can do at, actually. Uh, it's the verify the image manually to be sure that there is nothing uh, crappy inside. So what's finally a vulnerability? It's just a weakness that allows attackers to reduce system information insurance. So it's a hole, it's a gap inside your container. There is many uh, known uh, vulnerabilities. I can speak about Artbleed, that it's inside OpenSSL package, that it's a security package, but it was a, a huge mess when uh, uh, that vulnerability was found uh, two years ago. And also the ghost one, um, that was in JLibc library, so it's also a library that's used by a lot of package on uh, many distribution. So yes, you can be sure that, you are pretty sure that there is vulnerabilities inside your containers, but you just don't know it. So to track those vulnerabilities, there is tracker managed by uh, distribution, like Debian, Ubuntu, or Red Hat, with all the CVE, so common vulnerability and exposure, refer in it with which package has that vulnerabilities and where uh, and how we can fix it. But that's great. We have the info, but now we need to analyze our container to be sure that uh, there is vulnerabilities and how to fix it. To analyze it, there is two things. The dynamic one. Dynamic one, it needs to uh, uh, be performed on a real processor, and you have to run the container. And that's the main part. 
Running the container can be really expensive because now we have millions, uh, millions uh, uh, of uh, images. And the uh, most important thing is that it's really unsafe because you have to have a, uh, an environment totally isolated to deploy that container to be sure that it's not attackable at that time. And finally, that tools need a human input uh, and it's not totally automatic. So the other thing is static analysis. You don't need to execute programs. It's just an inspection inside your file system. And it's using tools like dpackage or RPM that are already in your distribution. So probably those tools are already uh, uh, on your machine where the container is running. So that's a great thing to, um, to, for the analysis. The other thing is that containers, it's divided for the moment in layers. And layers are shared between containers between images. So if we perform an analysis inside one layer, we can directly have that uh, analysis for the other images that use that layer. And that's pretty cool because we, can, we, cannot, uh, we don't need to redo for every images all the analysis. So how do you analyze containers, really? That's Claire. Claire, it's an open source project for the static analysis. Uh, of rocket and docker containers images. So it's from CoreOS and uh, it's on GitHub. Claire allow a transparent security view because it's generating reports and uh, you see exactly what you have inside your container. The vulnerability data from the tracker has continuously imported. So that's a great thing because there is not if, uh, the, the, uh, Claire will notify you when new vulnerability state uh, inside your, your already uh, analyzed images, uh, and it supports AppSy and um, Docker uh, images. So, how Claire is de designed? It's designed more like a framework. So, first, you have the, mo the vulnerability updater module. It's the part of the of Claire that will get the information from updater. Uh, the updater for here, it can be the tracker from Ubuntu or uh, Red Hat. But the great things be, 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 uh, behind that uh, uh, framework way of developing, it's, it's pluggable. So you can develop your own uh, vulnerability updaters. For example, there is uh, some information about uh, Alpine uh, analysis or uh, NPM analysis also. And you can plug it inside. The second module, it's data store. For now, the data store, it's only for PostgreSQL. So all the data will be stored directly inside the PostgreSQL, but you can also develop your uh, new driver for another database. And we know that uh, some guys in Huawei are developing for MySQL. The content detector, so as I say, there is dpackage, the there is RPM, but you can provide your own set of uh, tools to analyze the, 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 the content because it's static analysis. So if you want to check a specific file inside your container, you can add it as a content detector. There is the notifiers. The notifiers now, it's webhook. So you can subscribe to it and receive information if there is a new state in the uh, specific vulnerability or a specific image or all image. You can subscribe to a lot of uh, uh, not, uh, yeah, so notification and uh, uh, states uh, of the, the, the Claire uh, process. All of that can be uh, piloted by a RESTful API. So it's easy to integrate it inside existing tools like registry or continuous integra uh, integration tools that can be the client. So the client can't interact with Claire with the API to ask Claire to analyze a new images, for example, but also can subscribe to the notification, as I say. So as a wrap-up, Claire it's ta uh, use static analysis, and for now, use distribution-specific tools. It do the job only once, only once by layer, and share that information for all the images, and all is back in PostgreSQL, PostgreSQL, sorry. It suggests and notify via webhook 
the new vulnerabilities, the new state of the vulnerabilities, and the uh, which features are, and which package you need to install to fix that vulnerabilities. And also, it's built as a framework so you can plug your own modules inside if you want to use it. So, can you already use it? In the main uh, keynote, you already see it, but yeah, you can use it in Quay. So Quay is the private hosted registry from CoreOS. It supports Claire by default for all images. So each image you push on it, you already have the security analysis on it. It's generating power, uh, powerful uh, reports, and it is easily integrated. Uh, the the integration it's easily it's easy with um, your CI or Git because the webhook is already uh, enabled in Quay. So as I say, it's really easy to use it. You just upload, open the security tab, and ta-da! You have your beautiful report with all the information you need to fix. And the real great information is that one because it's providing the information you need to uh, update your layer to fix that uh, vulnerability. So, use case. Yeah. Uh, the continuous integration pipeline. So, imagine you, you, uh, you have a developer that creates a new images from a Docker Hub images. So, a third party one. It's created from and do a lot of, tough, uh, a lot of uh, stuff inside the Docker file and push that in the uh, registry. The registry trigger, trigger automatically the CI to generate a build and potentially to deploy the new application. Before that, CI will post a request to Claire to say, okay, can you analyze that image for me? So what's behind, you will not push yourself all the images over the network. You will ask Claire to download it from the registry. So it's a synchronous call. You just uh, say, okay, analyze it and wait that Claire will download all the layers. And if the layers was already uh, downloaded, because it's sharing layer, it will download only the new parts. After that, the CI can call Claire to analyze it. So Claire we will respond with a report with all the vulnerabilities that inside the container, and potentially you can just parse it to see if there is no new high or critical or DEFCON 1. I, I don't know that it's part of the process. The CI will block the deployment and uh, until that vulnerability will be fixed and the, new, uh, the notification will be sent to the developer to say, okay, you've just pushed new images, but there is vulnerabilities, can please fix it. Then the developer fix it in the Docker file, push it in the registry. It's the full same process, but at that time, Claire will download only the new layers with the, the fix in it, rerun the analysis on it, and okay, now we can redeploy because there is no vulnerabilities at all in it. So that's a great thing. But in a DevOps mindset, in the shift left mindset, we want to provide all the tools we will use uh, on top, we want to provide it to the developer, the more left possible, to avoid that kind of images already in the registry that can be pulled, for example, by another one. So we want to analyze it locally. So how can I uh, analyze it uh, from my own laptop? Here I introduce HyperClear. So HyperClear, it's a lightweight uh, command line tool that just interact with the API of Clair and do the bridge between registries and the Clair, um, the Clair process. It's a great thing because Clair doesn't handle the authentication by default. So when you're locally and you want to analyze, for example, a uh, an image that is on, on your own registry with authentication, you can log into HyperClair tool and the registration is done automatically. <coughs> or it's also generating HTML report, not beautiful as the one uh, from Quay, for sure, but uh, I think it was pretty great, uh, i say. So why I developed that? There is few reasons. 
But the first one is just I want to learn Go. So I, I start to see about uh, uh, analysis tool for the containers because uh, a need in my current project in, uh, in the bank. And yeah, as a developer, I want to learn a new language. So I just go through and see, OK, it's in Go, so I will learn Go. There is a, a tool already existing in the Claire repository that's called Analyze Local Images. They, it's work well, but it's not user friendly. You have to configure a, a lot of things to, to make it work, and you cannot work with registries because there is no authentication. So that's the main part why I developed Claire, uh, HyperClear. So the main idea, for the, especially for the UX part, I just want to use it as I will use other tools like uh, the Docker command, for example. So if I want to pull an image just to see which layer uh, it's inside, it's just HyperClear pull and the image name. The image name will be exactly the same uh, way as you will uh, wrote it in the Docker command. So if I happened, uh, I prefix with the registry, then the image name, it will pull that directly from the image name. It's the same for other command, push, analyze, and report, and there is some uh, variable uh, arguments that you can pass to get HTML or JSON reports. HyperCloud needs some configuration, and that's normal. First, it's the configuration about where Claire is. So to be transparent, if you want to analyze real local images, there is two needs. First need, and it's the easier one, it's just to run Claire locally. And that is just a container with the database, so it's quite easy to deploy it. The other one, if you have already a Claire uh, somewhere and you want to analyze local, it, you, uh, 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 local images, you need to have a public IP for now because what HyperClear does for that, it just pop a new web server for the call from Claire because what you do uh, to Claire, it's not post an images. You just ask for, uh, for an analy analysis and Claire will download from somewhere. So we need a web server to go through your local machine. So if you don't have public IP, and for many developers, that's the way, <laughs> I suppose. So you have to run Claire locally. There is two ways to configure it. You, have, you can configure it directly by a, a via a YAML file that you push. You can put it everywhere on your PC and specify it, or just uh, beside uh, the, in the folder where you run the HyperClear command, and it will take it automatically. Or you can configure it by uh, environment variable. So it's exactly the same uh, for the environment variable. For example, if I want to configure Claire port, just prefix with hyperclare uh, underscore and then the, all the, the properties from the YAML file and uh, it will be automatically uh, read. And how it works? So as I say, the, it's the same process. So the Docker Hub, your, the images from the Docker Hub, you add something on it, you put in your local registry or in uh, external registry, and also in Docker Hub, it's working also without Docker Hub. And then I would just want a report, so I will ask, uh, here you see Claire CTL, but it's HyperClear. Uh, you will download, you will ask for the report. So what HyperClear will do, it just pop a web server with the authentication system and the web server will just play as a reverse proxy. So then Claire ask uh, Claire to, uh, then HyperClear ask Claire for the analysis. So there is first the download, the download goes through the reverse proxy, there is the authentication if it's needed. And the rest of the process is exactly the same as I've shown with the CI and things like that. So. What's next for now with Claire? There is a lot of things on the way. The first thing is that there is some uh, driver from Huawei that will be deployed uh, with my, uh, for MySQL and also from trackers uh, for NPM and Alpine. And HyperClear, for now you can already log in with Docker Registry and Docker Hub and do the local analysis with a local Claire. And with uh, the future, uh, HyperClear will be integrated in the Claire repository. 
So it's a PR that it's uh, ongoing and will be renamed in Sclair TTL to have the same uh, name as all the CoreOS tools. It will support Quay, IO, and other registries like the Google ones, and there is a lot of improvement that uh, will be done on it. So I will just show a little demo on it. So as I say, here I'm in my, uh, in my personal repository, uh, my personal laptop. I have a uh, Claire is uh, running on my laptop and also a registry, but that is not needed if I do it locally. So what I can do, it's first I need to, for example, pull an images to see if it's uh, existing. So I will push an images from the registry. So it's my local registry and the images is JJS Courier uh, Ubuntu Git. Okay, there is the images with five layers in it. So now I need to push it to Claire. So here, I just send a request to Claire. Claire will download to the registry uh, on the port 5000, download it and then reply, okay, it's done and the images has been pushed to Claire. Uh, I can make it bigger if you want. It's better like that. Yeah. Uh, now, I can generate the report. So, it just gets the uh, vulnerabilities from Claire and generate an HTML report. And you can open it. Uh, it's downloaded in the folder uh, specified in your uh, config file. And here, here, there is no vulnerabilities. So I will just show you one with vulnerability, for example. So here, there is 62 uh, with all the, the type, you can have the CVE and here a lot of information uh, about what is exactly and the link to go through, uh, to go to the tracker uh, referring that um, CVE. But that's, it's from a registry and I'm logged in, I'm logged in that registry, so there is the authentication, but now I want to do the same thing but for the local images. So I can do the same. So I will start with the push, dash L for local, and then I will push the, uh, the images. That, look, that images is in my Docker uh, images list. So I will have somewhere here, there is a lot of things. Uh, here, uh, the images. So if I do, That one will take a little more time because it needs to create the tar.jz file that Claire will download. So it will get, uh, it will commit, uh, save from the docker save command, save it in a, a temporary folder, then send the request, Claire goes through the rep, uh, reverse proxy that is a web <laughs> file web server inside uh, 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 on your own machine and uh, download the images and after clean everything. So now it's pushed. So now what I want is to generate the report. So here there is the report generated. And yes, it do, it's the same uh, images, but you have your local images report. So that's all for me. It's already available uh, inside uh, the Womanity Belgium uh, Hyperclair uh, repository if you want to try it. As I say, it's on development, so it can be, uh, you can have a lot of issues on it probably. It's mainly tested on Linux, but it's compiled for uh, Mac also, and it's the, uh, the, the, the discussion for the web server it's done uh, via the Docker socket. So it should work also with, uh, because here I'm on native uh, Docker, but it should work also with uh, VirtualBox uh, uh, boot to Docker images, for example, inside or CoreOS Vagrant also. <laughs> uh, 
uh, on your laptop. So, yeah. Any questions? Yes? So I repeat the question. How do you update the uh, vulnerability uh, detectors? Is, is that? The, you mean the tracker, for example, from Ubuntu? No, or? Not only the tracker, but also the, the content detectors. There, there seem to be a lot of. Yes. Uh, that's part of the, the distribution. So it's integrating for a specific version, and Claire, it's updated, I suppose, for each uh, new version of the, that content detector. But the content detector is just reading and analyzing across the CVE. So it's more the update, the, the, the update it's more the tracker update that is needed, and that is on a regular basis. You can specify uh, if you want it uh, every minute or every month, I don't know, but you can specify it directly in the configuration of Claire. A limitation about the, the public IP. Is there any way to fix that? Ah, so the question is about uh, avoiding to have a public IP uh, IP to use the local analysis. I start to think about it, but I don't really find a way. Uh, there is two possibilities, and I, I, I saw some issues about that to uh, push directly the targz uh, to Claire as a post, but it's not uh, uh, really accepted for now. It's a discussion. The other way it's to, it's what I've done previously, it's to deploy a hyper Claire server that's just play like that. So you have somewhere that you push your images when it's needed, it's just saved. And it's done the same thing as locally, but somewhere that's Claire has uh, the, 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 the possible discussion. And after clear, uh, clear it all at, uh, after, so yeah. There is possibilities, but it's, you can't avoid to push all the, the layers on the network, and that's the main, the main problem, uh, because it's a target set, and it's pre pretty uh, uh, unsecure also, so yes. But it's, it's under discussion. Okay, so thank you, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>